There can be only one. I have come here to chew bubblegum and kick ass. All out of bubblegum. Go ahead. Make my day. Cinema Royale. I'm too old for this shit. I can't believe that just fucking happened. Groovy. Hello, welcome to Cinema Royale, where we chew bubblegum and talk about movies. I'm your host, Mike, and along with me are my officiatos of film, known as James Sullivan, also known as Jaime Tude. Tonight's broadcast is brought to you by the, the spirit of Halloween, the holiday that only ends when Morgan and I say it does. <laughs> God damn it, it's not over! Oh, it's over when I say it's, it's over. over. Not until when a turkey comes into my plate. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and Thanksgiving's best care of us. <laughs> and last but not least, Matt Brunet, also known as Animat. Hey guys, I'm also playing Pokemon at the same time. Yay. <laughs> Yay, folks, man, is awesome. I evolved my Pikachu. He's now a big level. Why would you do that? Because Pikachu! Oh, God, we are. All right. We're anyway. all a bunch of idiots. <laughs> it's, uh, it's okay. I'm editing while I do this. <laughs> Multitasking. The skill. I'm scribbling. That's the advantage with this po- with these podcasts. We could do whatever. We could pretty much do two things at once. We talk about movies while we do another thing. Exactly. And this episode of the topic of which we are be talking about is films that feature time travel. The theory of time travel of which a person can have a time machine and go either back to the past or into the future. And there is a lot of films that play around with that theory of time travel. So let's start off the round table of discussion with James. Okay. Well, let's talk about time travel and the... uh... And the, uh, I'd like to, I'd like to discuss, uh, for starters, the plausibility uh, of time travel as used, and uh, the frequent, uh, uh, the frequent, uh, shall I say, issues that I have um, uh, dealing with it. Um, the last time that I. The last time that I saw a uh, uh, anything that uh, that I remember strongly uses the concept of time travel uh, was watching uh, a rerun or a not a rerun but a run of uh, of a Doctor Who episode that. Reenacted the Christmas Carol with um, um, the Elvis Dumbledore guy. Uh, wait, who played who played Dumbledore again? Uh, Michael. Wait, Gambit. the first Dumbledore or second Dumbledore? Second Dumbledore. First Dumbledore is dead. I'm not 100 percent sure. I, I don't know who either of them are. I'm sure there's a lot of angry people now. <laughs> How dare you say that? The I... first one died for our sins. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, I know what you're talking about, James. Okay. Um. the The reason why I bring this up as an example is because it is uh, it is Doctor Who going back in the past, changing the changing the history of a person's life, and uh, interestingly enough. Uh, they have the man in present time instantly remembering how things were changed. I think that this 
uh, this this comes across to me at least as one of the most uh, as one of the mo- most plausible usages of time travel. Um, I say this because uh, in in uh, in in other films, even classic films, uh, Back to the Future. Um, uh, the Terminator and uh, a number of other films in which uh, time travel is used, they explore a theory called uh, alternate alternate timelines. Or at least they specifically call it an alternate timeline in Back to the Future. Mm-hmm. In The Terminator, they they don't really uh, they don't really call it that, but they do loosely say that the uh, that the future can be changed. Mm. Uh, the problem with this is the number is the number of uh, of wormholes that would be that would be opened up. Like, wouldn't uh, wouldn't people be instantly remembering things different? Or uh, or if the Terminator really did change the future so that so that uh, no. Uh, uh, so that no war happened, then how would he even come back in time to to protect John Connor to begin with? Which thankfully, uh, give it some respect, uh, Terminator Three answered. You guys get what I'm getting at? Or have I lost everybody here? It's, yeah, in a way. In a way I've lost you, or in a way... In a, uh, in a way you got me and lost me, because time travel is a very tricky concept in my mind, because, yeah, I can see it, like, in the Christmas Carol of, of Doctor Who, you know, you would think there'd be, you know, alternate timelines or paradoxes to what he's done, but in the other films that display time travel, there are paradoxes or alternate timelines to what has happened by traveling back in time. Mm -hmm. I came back. What were we... What what was going on? Sorry about that. (laughs) (laughs) The way there was that dead silence, I just thought... Where's the man with the glorious orange hat when I need him? Sorry, no, it's just I had an important phone call, so sorry about that. No, but um, from what you were talking, anyways, from what you were talking about with um, with, with uh, time traveling, like there is a point that it does, like if it does change, um, you do have to wonder how would it affect. Um, the present time, like, how would it affect, like, the present time? Like, um, how would it affect, like, the, like, pretty much the time where you left? How will it affect us? Like, will you just never come back and you'll just be in a new universe where, like, the, the, cha- the changes you applied have been affected? Mm-hmm. Well, each... Each movie on this uh, on this list is is free to set up its own uh, its own rules, but I guess uh, I guess we're free to suggest for ourselves whether or not they these rules make any sense. Yeah. So. Uh, if, if I may, I would like to start with um, with my movie that I want to talk about. Okay. All right. Okay. Now, this is actually very convenient that we are talking about this today about time traveling, because uh, just recently, I actually went to see a time an, an all new time traveling movie. Now, the thing is, is that is this is the kind that people just couldn't believe this has to be a time traveling movie. I am of course talking about the animated Free Birds. The movie in which two turkeys have to go back in time 
to the first Thanksgiving to get themselves off the menu as the main course of Thanksgiving. <laughs> Too late. <laughs> oh, we just talked about it? No, no, no. Got- uh, too late. They've already been on the menu. Ah, uh, yeah. No, no, no. But the thing is, is that, oh, God, the movie, like, how they pretty much introduced t- time traveling, they showed it as a, um, they introduced it by showing us it is a, like, a secret mission, like a secret U.S. government mission, apparently. And, like, they were preparing to have the first man to travel through time. And, mm. like, I will admit that the way they showed it, like, the way that they were setting it up, it makes a lot of sense, and it would be the way that, um, the U.S. like, the U.S. would show, would, um, handle time travel. Like, first it has to be, like, in a hush-hush secret mission from the whole government to show, like, if it is, like, if it's working or not. And, like, if they're gonna, if they're gonna make this breakthrough technology. Uh Uh-huh. Huh. (laughs) So how is this, how would you say this is believable? Um, the way that, well, I would say that the technology is definitely not believable, but the way that they, the way that they prepare it from the U.S. government to, um, how big the, the facility where they keep the time traveler it is like everything like that 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 seems a little bit that seems pretty believable yeah, but the yeah. rest of the time traveling theories they have just makes absolutely no sense do tell <laughs> uh, <laughs> I kind of did but uh, oh boy well pretty well also the factor that the time tra- like the tra- time traveling machine has its own personality in itself. Plus the fact that it's voiced by George Takei. <laughs> Hello, I am Steve, and I am here to bring you through traveling. He was yeah. He was so proud of that he announced that on his Facebook page too. I was like oh, George. Really? I was like George. You, you really had to work on this. <laughs> yes, because I am the time traveling machine. I could go to any year that I want. Uh, so, um, so what kind of uh, what kind of problems with time travel does this movie propose? Uh, the um, one thing that I uh, the one thing that I that I got from this, uh, uh, from the, the trailer and the whole idea was that uh, I had a I had issues with the whole um, taking turkeys off the menu. I mean, what is this, a FEMA-funded movie or something? <laughs> <laughs> kind of. It does have, like, a vegetarian... It does have a, ve- a really, like, vegetarian, like, subliminal message to it. Like, I can't really, exp- like, this is something I can't really go into much, because that would actually be spoilers in the movie. Because, like, all I can <laughs> say is that when it comes to time travel, there are, they do imply changes, but it's just, like, very minimal change. It's just the small thing that pretty much Reggie and Jake changed, that's essentially the only thing that changed. It, that's it. And the rest, well, like, and, uh, well, like, the, like, the, as for the actual ending itself, is probably one of the worst endings I've ever seen in my life, because of how stupid it is. Like, oh, God. It, it's so, it's like, it's a true, like, like, face palm situation. <laughs> like, even, so like, I remember when I was in the theaters just watching it. And then when they revealed that ending, I was just there. What? <laughs> what just happened on the screen? I don't even know. I'm I'm not gonna go see it then. Good. <laughs> I'm I'm just gonna 
I'm just gonna sit back, enjoy my turkey. I'm Thanksgiving. <laughs> Uh, but uh, uh, yeah, so they're. I take it they're not going uh, by the Ray Bradbury theory of uh, time travel, which is if you go back in time, step on a butterfly, and come back to the future, everything's changed. Yeah, definitely. Well, yeah, they're not. They're not going in that route. Like they, they, they just changed. All they did is just change one small element, and then they came back to the present time, like, as if nothing nothing has happened except for that small thing. Okay, no. No, 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 no. <laughs> uh, Back and to if the I future tell, part you two. Know, if you guys want, like, I can write you, I can write you down, like, what it is, like the the ending, if you want, and trust me, it's it's like you'll be shocked. You mean like send it to us in a PM? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's what he means. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> that, let's do it right here so we can get our reactions. Yeah. Because <laughs> we don't want to reveal the spoilers to our listeners. Because if they want to watch it, they can watch it. But if not, <laughs> well, if there's one thing they should watch is my review, which I posted today. Go check it out. There you go. There's your plug. Name of self plug. Okay. There Check you go. That fellow in the coat dot com. <laughs> <laughs> I kid you not. <laughs> <laughs> I kid you not. That's what happened. No way. No, that's essentially what happened. <laughs> I could go into full detail, but I can't. <laughs> don't don't watch the movie because the ending is so stupid. Uh, Wait, wanna, hold on. I want to I want to I want to announce it and just crack so many jokes at it at this very moment, but I have to hold back. Uh. God, God, be kidding me. Hold on, there's more. <laughs> well, I wonder who funded this movie. Yeah. Price you, boy. <laughs> <laughs> I've never laughed so hard in my life. Did they also invent birthday parties and sing along marionettes? <laughs> no. Okay, that's a hint. <laughs> Okay, oh that's enough. No, nope, no, nope, that's enough. Oh, okay. Enough. The movie's bad enough. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. It would, you know, honestly, I could say that the movie would be, the movie would actually be okay if it weren't for that dumb ending. Oh, my God. <laughs> if you want to... <coughs> okay, okay. <clears throat> okay. All right. Um... I don't think we're going to be able to top that. Uh, no, 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 I don't think so. Um, no, not, not what I'm thinking for movies, but there could be something in the mix. So that's the only change that they have done in in the time, like in the time continuum. It's just that small element. <laughs> it just, it just. <sighs> What's the what's face, the face palm until it bleeds, ladies and gentlemen. Face palm until it bleeds. Uh, um, I suppose. Did, did you want to mention a movie that talk about James, or should I just go? As you can okay, tell, time traveling go. turkeys isn't the stupidest thing in the movie. <laughs> Apparently. No, but insert blank truly is. <laughs> uh, so, um, hmm, I mentioned him a while ago, uh, Ray Bradbury. Oh, yes, yes, yes the um, a, a, a sound of thunder. A sound of thunder, which had its own 
Yes. Uh, yes. Adaptation in I, 2005. I, 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 you know, I've seen it. It was bad. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> it's horrible. I, really... I haven't seen Sounds of Thunder. Wait. No, I haven't seen it. Wait, what? What is it like? What's it about? If you just uh, if you just want to look at 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 something that's entertainingly bad or in or not even entertainingly bad, it's a mixture of both, depending on who you ask. Uh, a Sound of Thunder is a, a a story written by Bray Bradbury that was turned into a film, in which uh, in which there there is an agency running a time travel safari experience, meaning you go back in time uh, 65 million years uh, uh, at the right bidder, they can uh, uh, they can if you want to go hunt a dinosaur uh, you can do that. And that sounds... so go on. the uh, uh, the rules are though if you if you step off the platform that they use that is hovering above uh, that is hovering above uh, the ground and you accidentally step on a plant or something it uh, you will change time once they send you back to the future hmm. uh, in the book the uh, uh, they have the usual uh, scenario um, in what in which time changes. Uh, what happens is what happens is uh, the um, uh, they send someone back in time to shoot a dinosaur, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, they only this time. Somebody gets so scared of the dinosaur that they step off the the track, and, and it's implied that they step on a butterfly or something. Um, when they flash forward to the future, uh, mo most everything has changed. The way that we spell we spell everything phonetically. Uh, the wrong guy got elected president. Uh, a long list of a lot, there's just a long list of uh, uh, problems with the with the newfound future, and in his frustration of the uh, in his frustration with his own client, uh, the guy who runs the time traveling agency shoots the client, and bang, there is a sound of thunder. Mm. That's what it ends with. In the film. We learn why you should not expand upon this. Um, uh, somebody does uh, the client does step off the track, and he does step on a butterfly. But when they flash forward to the future, nothing is instantaneously changed. They, uh, <laughs> um, every every creature. Uh, from the every creature uh, from the lowest life forms to the highest life forms starts changing in waves. They they start re evolving over time. Uh, over time, these changes hit the present in waves, and uh, suddenly we've got uh, raptor gorillas and uh, a lot of actually. I, I gotta admit, very creative uh, creatures, but it makes the idea of the future being changed in waves makes even less sense to me. Yeah. And the rest of the film comes, uh, 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 turns into a mission to go back into the time, go back in time. And uh, using some kind of time slingshot method, uh, you did. That's all I have to say about it. That's the only way I can possibly explain it. If you want to, if you want to know 
more about that, watch the movie, but pre be prepared to laugh. Um, they have to go back in time and stop themselves from changing time. Ah, uh, I see, okay. I which, can see where the problem is, actually. Because, which just like, means that everybody's freaking confused. <laughs> nah, like, I... Like, Nobody makes any sense. <laughs> I, I can see what they want to do. Like, I can understand they want to try to, like, test out the theories of, like, what happens when you change things in the course of time. But the problem that I... That, that they did is that they expand on it a little too much. They made it a little too, like, they made, like, they bring up premises that seem a little too confusing, a little too ridiculous. They, it, it's essentially a problem where they thought, they thought too much into it, per se. Mm, I don't know. I think they thought too little into it at, at times. Uh, it's like the, uh, lazy. Uh, go on, you were gonna say. Sorry, Mike. It was just lazy. It was like very sloppy, in my opinion. It was just like they didn't think about it. It was like half-assed, kind of going into it. The short story was fine on its own, but they had, they had to expand upon it with you know with the evolution shit and I mean that's creative what they did with the you know, the evolutions of animals, and it was their creative process, but, you know, it's not a true, faithful adaptation of what Ray Bradbury was going for. Mm -hmm. God rest his soul. Uh, now, it's not like they weren't... It's, it's not like the screenwriters weren't thinking. It's, uh... You see... Uh, when they when they write down the rules of this universe in the beginning, they make sure to cover a few bases. They say, "Okay, we're going to back we're going back in time to shoot a dinosaur." That's not going to change time, is it? Uh, well, actually, no, because uh, they picked a dinosaur that was gonna that was going to fall into a tar pit and drown anyway. Um, so they've got. So it's not like they're killing off something that's uh, not already going to die at the at the same time, same place. Um, but wait, guns uh, guns have metal bullets in them, and that could possibly change something in the soil or in the or in the makeup of the uh, or in the makeup of uh, uh, the tar pit, I guess, over or over time, and when that uh, they say, well, yeah, we haven't invented lasers yet. Instead, we've got ice guns. Ice melts, so it turns into water. So that's not going to change the makeup of anything here. It's a natural. It's a natural component. Um, you know, there, you know. They I were thinking in the beginning. Huh? Yeah. You know, there's one thing that I just realized. Huh. You, you know, like, it, it's kind of, it feels like nitpicking a bit, but does it really matter if you change anything in the prehistoric period, like, like step on a plant or something, or like step on a butterfly or something like that, when the entire prehistoric area was going to be destroyed completely by meteors anyways? Um... Not not necessarily. If you if you stepped on if you stepped on a lizard, then uh, mm -hmm. or or an ant or a bug or any of the uh, or any of the life forms that allegedly existed during the time of the dinosaurs, but then continued to survive and evolve after the time of the dinosaurs. Then you could have, you could have still made a rift in time. The plants remained. The plants remained. They evolved. We still have plants today, obviously. So, whatever uh, whatever plants we have now probably have roots. No pun intended. In the uh, prehistoric times. 
Hmm, interesting. I, I, it's just that I just thought about that, and I was and I was curious to know. It's like, but like, there was a time in the dinosaurs where like everything is going to be destroyed. Would it really matter if you like change one small thing there? Uh, well, um, I don't know. Ask uh, Ask Homer Simpson. <laughs> yes, that's true. Oh my god, I just thought about that episode while you were talking about it. Uh huh. <laughs> so, who else has got something to uh, to talk about? <clears throat> I might have something that might uh, cringe you guys, or maybe the listeners at home. I should talk about the time of which the turtles went back in time. In oh! Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 3. Oh, that way. when they went Star Trek time. Now I get to use the reference I wanted to use earlier. Which one? Help, I'm a turtle and I can't get up. <laughs> Actually, I was going to say pizza time. Uh, oh, yes. Anyway. Uh, uh. But, uh... <clears throat> anyway, go on. This... If you haven't known already, I grew up on the Turtles. It's my childhood. And I used to watch Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2, The Next uh, Secret of Ooze, and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 3 back-to-back all the time. You know, they had, had, had it on VHS all the time. And 3, just, oh my god, what the fuck happened? I mean, of course, the games were popular with Turtles in time, but, you know, let's make it into a movie. Sure, let's have uh, April O'Neil played buy somebody else that from the first movie have bought went to an antique shop and buy this scepter which is from ancient Japan and you know shit happens you know something happens and because apparently that's for sale yeah it's like oh shit what is this is this for sale yeah sure why not I'll sell it to you that's an ancient ancient relic from the ancient Japan. It's a time-traveling scepter. You can have it. Oh, thank you. Goodbye. <laughs> thank you. I love yeah. you. Bye-bye. Yeah, shouldn't that be in a, an antique shop or something? Or was it in an antique shop? It, it was, apparently, because, you know, he, he, she got a bunch of other crap along with it when they go in, she goes into the lair. I stand corrected. Shouldn't it be locked away in a vault somewhere where no one can touch it? Exactly, yeah. I was just mm. I was thinking, it's like, Okay, what? what I, 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 how? But I guess I don't know. I, I'm still trying to get this concept under my head that somehow in the past this scepter goes off. In the present too, it goes off, and whoever holds it switches places. Like, let's say four Japanese soldiers and a general hold it, along with April Neil and the four turtles. They go back in time. They switch places. <laughs> So it, they're kind of half. So the April O'Neil and the Turtles are in the past, and these these soldiers and this general are in the present now. Just they just did a full time swap, and so they have to figure out how to get back to the present somehow while you know defeating this bad guy. Yeah. I'm sorry. Did you just say time swap or time? You bloody time. T you t swap. Oh, I met you. Custoded. <laughs> ah, censor that out. <laughs> None shall hear me kiss. <laughs> I said swap, but there there was a couple of times where I think it said because the bad guy said you bloody. T Did it? I thought I, that. I, I have to rewatch it, but it was just oh, you poor soul! You had to rewatch it. <laughs> it's just so bad. I mean, the even the turtle, you know, it's not based on the time travel, but the turtle suits are just even worse than the first two. The mouth wounds are not even perfect, and 
Oh God. Uh, so, but how? By the way, keeping to the theme of the episode, how do you how, how do you feel about like their concept of time traveling? That scepter is like what are the confusing ways of time travel? I mean, it has to be the right moment. You can't go to a certain place you want to go. You can't go in the present, the past, or whatever. You just have to. I don't know. I don't know how it works because apparently, you know, if somebody's holding it at the same time as you are, you get swapped in time and. And you have to do the same thing again. You have to kind of grab a scepter, and you have to be at the certain time at the right moment, and then boom, you're back in time, or you're back in the present. It's not yeah, really, specific, I guess. It's just really the worst mach- way of time traveling. It's just so. Wait, what if somebody's handling it sometime in between uh, now in the times of feudal Japan? And uh, you accidentally swap places with them while trying to go back in time and meet up with your friends. I mean, the moment you touch this thing, you could swap with anybody in in history. Yeah, if they're holding it at the exact same moment that you are holding it. Which... But they're never holding it at the exact same moment, so you could theoretically transport anywhere. Anytime. Yeah, this thing is already complicated as it is. I was just going to say, you're trying to improve on it somehow. I was like, wait, I'm confused. (laughs) No, I'm just poking holes in the film. I'm saying it doesn't make sense. Yeah, it makes no sense whatsoever. It makes sense in the sense. (laughs) That it makes no sense. Jeez, I feel like Jack Sparrow, like in the first movie. Me, I'm dishonest. And a dishonest man is always dishonest. Honestly, I'm dishonest. <sighs> okay. So how about um, so how about other issues that uh, the current time travel films? Here's a. Uh... Hang on a sec. Hold that thought. Um, I am going to add in Morgan, so it's not too late to join. I'm going to add him in, because we just talked about, what, like, three films? Yeah. We so, talked about turkeys, turtles, turtles. and thunder. <laughs> going back in time. So let me add... You know, the- thinking about Turtles 3, suddenly time-traveling turkeys isn't so bad, really. <laughs> in comparison... And it's like, so I just realized it could be worse. Yep. Hello, Morgan. Hey, Morgan. Gobble, 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 mother. <laughs> <laughs> I see you went to watch uh, Free Birds. No, I saw your review of it, and after reading someone else's review of it, I was mortified to hear how the ending was. <laughs> oh, oh, that's nothing. Uh, uh, yeah. That's nothing. You should see what I told them about the ending. <laughs> Product placement saves the day. Um, <laughs> don't, 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 don't. I will leave it there. I will leave it there. I will leave it there. We, okay. We didn't I will say, say I can this. tell you later, Morgan. I, I will say this from what I've read. I think Brad Pitt getting saved by Pepsi cans is more effective. <laughs> I will leave it at that. Good. This is brought to you by why World War Z would make a, a terrific Pepsi advertisement. Oh, so that... <laughs> wait, that happened in wait that happened in World War Z. Yeah, that was the fun part of the movie. Oh my god, really? No, 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 no seriously though, World War Z World War Z is an entertaining popcorn flick. <clears throat> I, I just wish it was more serious and George Romero like, but it was still a lot of fun. Hell, I even have the Blu-ray. Hmm. Oh. Oh that enjoyable. Interesting. Yeah. So, yeah, we've talked about uh, Free Birds. Um, Sound of Thunder. Sound of Thunder. We talked about... Uh, and, I, and I mentioned Turtles 3. Of course. Turtles, Turtles 3. It's supposed to be very sad for anyone coming Turtle? in to expect <laughs> we talk about Terminator and Back to the Future. Yeah, exactly. When we get turkeys and turtles. Turtles. Uh, <laughs> Mikey? Okay. All right. So, uh, why don't you? Uh, 
Uh, hang on a sec. And I was going to quickly say that uh, uh, I've, I discussed a few discrepancies I found in movies like uh, The Terminator, um, uh, the Back to the Future trilogy, and uh, even Men in Black 3. Mm. Yeah. I think there's another one we're missing out, too, and believe it or not, I'm actually going to use Terminator 2 as an example, and I'm not going to go by the movie, but a deleted scene, if that's okay, everybody. Okay, yeah, sure, yeah. why not? Sure. Um, believe it or not, there exists an alternate ending, and this is on the DVD, by the way, where after the Terminator destroys himself, we cut to a nice, happy, bright future, where... No. Sorry about that, I was distracted by the printer, apparently it's out of ink. Anyway, um... Uh... I thought something fell. No, no, that's that's my uh, malark, so I apologize for that dead silence. But no, in the deleted scene, what happens um, is we see Sarah as this frail old woman. This exists on YouTube, if you're curious. Um, and across from her is uh, John Connor, grown up as an adult with a bunch of kids. So it's sort of a very awkward shift, isn't it? Going from Sarah, who's this mighty, I am taking back the past, um, you stupid machines kind of roll to this very fragile person all together from the first film. Um, I mean, maybe it does make sense in a way, considering how they changed the possibilities of what's to come, but when you really do think about it, it sort of kills the ending a little, especially considering the unknown outcomes of what it is to bring to the future. So, if the Terminators are gone... There's no big cyber war. There's no reason for John Carner to... Uh, Josh, sorry. You know who I'm talking about. The future leader becoming a big, powerful kind of figure. So it really erases all those mobilities. Mm -hmm. Which is exactly the problem that I had with even the way that Terminator 2 ended with the, uh, with the implication that it was going to be a big, bright, bright beautiful future. Yeah. Or at least yeah, it kind of it also kind of delusions like what how we would see like um, how we would see like the future in the Terminator universe. Like, is there still going to be more Terminators out there? Will they uh, use Terminators in a better light, or will we have different versions of Terminators? Will they still exist or not? And yeah. how are people going to live? You know, it like it like that that ending opens up to many different options that only leaves that only leaves to the imagination of the viewer after they watch the film. But then hmm. that that thing would would come along and, and would probably kind of ruin it a bit for them. Yeah. It would it, it, like it wouldn't make Terminator 2 as memorable as it is right now. No. Mm -hmm. And of course let's not forget you didn't stop Judgment Day, you only prevented it. Postponed or what we like to call the writers trying to find a loophole. <laughs> this is what happens when you end your movies on an ambiguous level, people. <laughs> Much more ambiguous than Psycho 2, and I love that one as well. Oh, I haven't seen that. Ooh, we gotta see that sometime then. Okay. Seriously, Anthony Perkins trying to play a sane man. Great idea. Alright, back to time travel. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, nearly got sidetracked. Sorry about that. It's been a while, folks. I've been doing a whole lot of stuff. Yes. Well, uh, we understand a lot of things are happening in your life, so yeah, yeah, yeah. we we can uh, understand. Yeah, we always have things in our lives. Here, have my get out of jail free card. <laughs> Don't mind if I do. Hey, this is a graham cracker. <laughs> it's yummy. I trusted you for a second. I broke what? That's what I do. I bribe the prison guard with graham crackers, and then I get out of jail for free. Anyways, yes. Let's go around in a circle again, starting with James, and keep going. Oh, I miss this group. Okay, oh, we miss you too, Morgan. I know. I know. All right, so more discrepancies in uh, in the uh, in time travel films. Uh, should I uh, should I discuss either the problem with space time travel or the problem with uh, uh, Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban? 
Oh boy. Oh wait. Wait, what? What's with? Pri- oh wait, I think I might know what you're talking about. Wait. What's with time traveling? Oh wait, oh yeah, that thing. Right, I forgot. Okay. The little. Okay, I guess I'll talk about that. All right. Uh, um, I just realized what you were talking about. I was like, oh right. Yeah. That thing. Okay, okay, okay. All right. Wow, that which was good. <laughs> uh, well, here is the issue. Uh, I might as well talk about that then. Uh, in the Prisoner of Azkaban, Hermione Granger, our beloved uh, uh, token female character, uh, who is smarter than everybody else, um, uh, has a time traveling amulet. She uses it uh, periodically throughout every school day. Uh, to uh, uh, to double up on her classes. So if she goes back in time, uh, she'll take one period, then go back in time at the end of that period, uh, and uh, and take another class that takes place during that same time. Uh, clever idea to double up on your classes, and I've seen people, I've seen people double up on their classes before. It's pretty crazy. Um, Here's the issue. Once you, uh, if you're doing that, let's say you've got seven, uh, let's say you've got seven periods during a day, during a school day, right? Now let's say every period lasts about an hour. You've added seven hours to your day. So, what's oh, going? Oh, I know where you're going with this. Mm-hmm. Are you going to appear to age more rapidly to everybody around you? Oh. Or are you going to start falling asleep at, uh, at 3 o'clock in the afternoon? Yeah, that, that, yeah that, that's the thing. It's like when... Well, on the other hand, I mean, they are wizards. So, like, there, there must be a spell to, like... To like unage them, unage themselves a bit, or um, or like to try to feel like have like self caffeine into them. What I'm trying to say is, oh, d- don't worry about it because magic. <laughs> As well, uh, if if she kept, if she was constantly keeping up her keeping herself up with caffeine, you know, ca- caffeine uh, caffeine makes you fat if you drink too much of it. Well, She's pretty trim. Hmm. Exercise? I mean, no, like they got no fried away foods? from the from the Death Eaters a lot, so yeah, yeah, and uh, it uh, it well, it might actually explain uh, why what some people were complaining about it with the series was how was how quickly uh, it seemed. Even through the first film, uh, the actors were going through puberty. So there's a a slight. Uh, I, I guess the time traveling amulet could be a slight way of explaining that somehow. Mm. Oh, maybe that raises a lot of questions. Mm-hmm. So, uh, but back to uh, the other discrepancy. Or shall I? Shall we move around the table? What other discrepancies are there? Um, the other discrepancy that I was wanting to discuss was uh, space-time travel. Ah, uh, yes. yes. We've already traveled. We've already had men travel in space. So why does it make sense to establish? That uh, uh, in certain films like uh, Planet of the Apes and uh, um, Event Horizon. Event Horizon. <laughs> I'm going to bring uh, that up because there's a really, really good point in there. Um, well, it. Um, oh, okay. Well, uh, Event Horizon is a different beast, I think. But um, well, you probably know what I'm referring to. Yeah, um, the uh, or what was I? What was I going to say? Uh, Flight of the Navigator. 
Oh. Ah, yes. Oh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you got movies where apparently traveling through space uh, makes time, makes you age slowly, and time on Earth uh, speed uh, go at the speed of light. How, why does this make sense? Why is this acceptable? Doesn't light travel fast? I guess, like, they want to try to find a, an ex, like an explainable way that, um, pr- like, to explain a bit of time travel. Like, if the answers aren't on Earth, maybe it's somewhere, art, uh, like, up in space where there is no time. So pretty much you can mix and mingle with whatever you want. There's no gravity, there's no time, there's nothing that has Earth elements up in space. So maybe, like, you could try to bend, like, you can bend with it as well. Hmm. I mean, now that I think about it, too, especially considering how, um, oddly enough, there's a lot of strange questionables about why different animals have different lifespans. I mean, that's another thing to take into accord. Things have different uh, modes of time. I mean, time is instantaneous, but creatures and objects have their own uh, time stream, considering how long they last forever. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Okay. Uh... Makes about as much sense. That's all I'm going to say. Yeah. Right. So, uh, Morgan, you were going to mention Event Horizon, one of my favorites. Oh, yes. I was revisiting this movie over the weekend. I actually had the DVD copy. Um, I got about 55 minutes in, then I had to go to work. But um, the concept is that Sam Neill built a ship that has the ability to... Uh, it's, he explains it in a very strange way, um, to go from one spa- one spot to another. So, to put it bluntly, it's like how the t- DeLorean time travels, but not through time, it's literally just teleporting itself. But the strange thing is, it's somehow stuck in between the space that it's going from one spot to the next. Like, take for example, you want to go from a convenience store... No, 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 wait. Say you want to go from your house to a convenience store. Mm-hmm. Okay, you just literally, in the blink of an eye, jump right from your home and straight to the convenience store. Isn't that um, teleportation than time travel? Yes. Don't! Uh, the, in, the, uh, in the world of the film, uh, they say that they refer to it as folding uh, time and space. Oh, that's what it was. Ugh. Although, I... Do you think this is this would fit more in the category of transport of uh, teleportation? My mistake. So, uh, yeah, if you haven't seen the film, go see it. <laughs> All right, then in that case, I was going to bring my next example of discrepancies. Um, how many of you have seen the movie Time Bandits? I have. Oh, I know what you're. Oh, it's mm-hmm. been too, too long. Too yeah. Long for me to remember. <laughs> I, I mean, say yes, but too long for me to remember. Yeah, understandable. I mean, think about this idea: you have a kid that's traveling along and meeting these different figures, and the thing is, he thinks that these figures are what he appreciated. You know, Robin Hood being this well natural man, uh, Napoleon being a man of skill. He goes and sees them. What are they? Slouchers, lazy. They don't do anything. They're wimps. <laughs> And that's the thing I really like about Gilliam's style. It's that aspect of, we think we know our history well until we actually see it in action. And I find that interesting because this is what free birds should have been. You have a kid roaming around in these different periods like uh, Greece where Sean Connery's Agamemnon and stuff like that. And there's just literally no consequence because the events just act out as they are. And people just go about their normal lives saying, oh yeah, this happened in the past. Can't complain. No, no. Um... But, of course, there is a lot of arguments to put in there, but, again, it fill up the whole discussion. But it's just that idea of knowing that 
there's no way to change the past because time is one long, instantaneous strand. And I think that's explained a lot better in Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure because you know the guys are going to be big hits because no matter what historian figures they pull out of time, no matter what they do, it's still going to fix itself because that's how the events play out, especially that scene where they're trying to break them out and they say, okay, after this, we're going to do this and this and this and that and this and that and we're going to leave this right here. And then as they're speaking, they actually find the item or something like that. Um, it's just that whole aspect of no matter what happens, even if you try to change time, it's still going to alter itself to the current events that pretty much exist. Mm, true. Mm. Uh, I don't know. Uh, Bill and Ted doesn't seem like something that should be thought too much about. I don't know. I mean, it is a comedy, but when you do think about it, it has an interesting way of bending time travel in a way. Uh, there's a... Uh... Actually, it just reminds me, there is one movie that I, that, like, I just remembered. It has a very unique uh, concept of time traveling. Not really a good film in itself, but... The way they presented time traveling is kind of interesting. Mm. And I'm talking about um, Click. I think there was a movie before, but I'm referring to the one that has Adam Sattler and Christopher Walken. <laughs> yes. Initially, what, what it is is that Adam Sattler just got this remote in which he can control time. Like, it's pretty much like a, like a time traveling remote. He could go forward into time. He could go backwards into time. And initially, what they brought up as a concept is that, like, no matter what he does, when he b goes backwards or goes forwards, or, like, when he pauses and stuff like that, he initially move. his body initially moves with the, uh, with the remote. Mm. So initially, like, when he fast-forwards, like, his body also fast-forwards as his age. Mm-hmm. But when he it... lands in the next spot, uh, uh, which is uh, automatically predetermined for him by the creator of the Deus Ex Machina device, uh, he doesn't remember anything that has happened. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All I have left to say about... The only comment I have on that is, Morty, what are you doing with my technology? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> man. Yes. Someone's scratching their microphone. That's much better. There we go. Yeah. Oh, okay. So where do we go next? Um, scratch. Let's see. Time traveler's wife. Didn't get. Didn't see it. Uh, familiar. I've I've seen it actually. I mean, I've Eric. Of... Eric Bennett plays a man who, uh, who uh, cannot, who is genetically predisposed to travel through time, uh, but never, uh, but never has any control over when. And where he goes to. Uh, the one, the one thing that patches uh, that patches this movie up is that in the in the universe of this film, uh, he he's never in the same place twice. So therefore, uh, time continues at a at a constant, and he is uh, he is pretty much expected to appear at different, you know, figure out where he is, when he is, and uh, appear at different times, and figure out how to get to where he's supposed to be. Um, one curiosity that. Uh, that uh, this opens up is that over time he does have a daughter with uh, Jennifer Connelly uh, who has the ability also to time travel 
only she's mastered it to the point where she can control it. Does this mean that now she is able to travel back to the same point in time multiple times, and if so, does she, will she run into herself? Didn't she run into herself technically? She, I know she. There's a scene where she was talking to her past self. Hmm. She was talking to a younger self. She went back to a certain time, and mom, mom, when the younger of her came into the house, and mom's like, "Who are you talking to?" And he's like, "A friend." And they, of course, the friend is the future her. Hmm. I guess I must have forgotten that part. Strangely enough, this kind of reminds me of the lake house for some reason. Hmm. That whole concept where, uh, what's his name? Uh, oh, uh, Keanu Reeves and uh, they're they're both in different time periods, and the only thing that's linking to them is like the lake house or something like that, where they keep writing each other messages. Um. It's based off a novel. Sandra Bullock, that's what it was, Sandra Bullock. And um, it's this sort of weird thing where, like, Keanu Reeves is in the past, but Sandra's in the future, so she knows what's going to happen, what's going on. Um, and what's the reason, what's the whole reason why they have the ability to uh, contact and connect with each other? Should I spoil it? Oh, I think I know what you're talking about. I think I saw mm -hmm. that Sandra Bullock movie. Yes, mm -hmm. I think yep. I know what it is. Yep. Okay, go on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, you can. all right, all right, all right. I don't think anyone's. Gonna, I don't reason. think anyone else has got to watch it. So go. All right, all right. It, it's it's a chick flick that you probably find in a lifetime anyway. Um, the reason for this being is because Sandra sees someone die in her timeline. That person was Keanu Reeves. The person she falls in love with. And so, miraculously, somehow, she manages to send a letter to the past, hoping that he'll read it, and the way to connect it through is the mailbox to deliver the messages, which doesn't make much sense in many regards, because... Uh, <laughs> bananas are plentiful, that's all I got. I mean, you have... Something that's sort of a gateway to the past that's delivering things from past to future, past to future, almost like a mailman going from one state to the next, just back and forth, back and forth. It's just... Ugh. I, I'm, I'm too tired to even discuss exactly how some of the problems in this kind of area... Uh, someone please jump in. I, I mean, we're talking about... A, just out of curiosity, what? did, what, did um, Keanu Reeves die by... Um... Like, expl his car exploded? Uh, no, in the movie what happens is, uh, supposedly, he recognizes her and tries to go straight towards her, and he just... Big surprise. And the thing is, they're two years apart from each other. Oh, so he got okay. one in 2006, one in 2008. Oh, this might not be the movie I was thinking about, then. Oh, you're probably thinking of Speed, then. Because they were in that one, no, too. No, 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 it ain't Speed. It's a oh. Sandra Bullock movie. Hmm. It has, like, she's, like, seeing the future, like... Oh. Uh, hold on a oh. Like, she's seeing oh. a car exploding. Oh, 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 Premonition. Premonition. Premonition! Premonition! That That's it. Premonition. <laughs> and the man that gets a cigar. I'm rather a cookie, but okay. Yeah. <laughs> Now we shall discuss Time of the Apes. Uh, <laughs> that apes. Korean classic, how dare you! <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, they actually had... It, it, it was a miniseries. <laughs> <laughs> it was a Planet of the Apes clone done by Koreans. And it was... Uh... It, it was viewed on Mystery Science Year 3000. I'll leave it at that. I Wasn't it, it also talked about in, um, uh, what, Ed Glazer talked about it as well? Oh, yeah. Uh, Lupa what? stepping in for Ed Glazer. Yeah, I was gonna say, Lupa did those... Oh. But it's the oh. same show, yes. Uh, yeah. Not. Well, on, on Ed's show, per se. Hmm. 
Okay, so uh, I believe you're next in the loop, Mr. Matt. What? Are you next in the loop here? No, nah, I suggested Click, and then Morgan suggested the Sandra Bullock movie, or <laughs> the Time Bandits, or I don't know. He, he suggested a series of movies. Yeah, just pop He's around. A, one, two, yeah. three, four. One, two, three, four. I think okay. it's your turn, James. Yeah. Can I talk about a video game? Sure, why not? Yeah. Go for yeah. it. Okay. Okay, I'm looking at our cheat sheet here. Uh, one title that has come up is a childhood classic of mine, Maniac Mansion, Day of the Tentacle. That sounds like the title to a hentai. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, but Day of the Tentacle. <laughs> Everybody loves Cthulhu! <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. In all seriousness aside, go on, James. Okay. the the uh, The plot of this game is that a mad scientist's uh, pet tentacle uh, <laughs> drinks toxic sludge going into a river, grows arms, grows super intelligent, decides to he's now evil and wants to take over the world. Of course. Uh, Yes. Uh, so, in this game, you play as uh, you play as three individuals uh, who have been displaced throughout time accidentally, and uh, one is in the present, uh, trying to uh, trying to uh, uh, work things out in the present. One has been transported 200 years back into the past during colonial times and is, uh, and is, uh, meeting up with, uh, uh, meeting up with the likes of George Washington and Thomas Jefferson, mm. uh, and John Hancock, who, uh, 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 who has a thing for blankets, apparently. <laughs> Um, and the, uh, the third person is transported into the future in which, uh, Purple Tentacle has taken over the world. Tentacles are now the ruling species, and, <laughs> oh, I, I am, to I am going where to, this... I am going to help and post the artwork cover because this is not what I expected. Yes. Um... See? Yes, it's a Planet of the Apes type of future in which uh, human beings are now pets. Oh my uh, god. Yes. The tentacles look like Patrick from Spongebob. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love this game. But seriously... Um, I wonder why it was a moderate success. <laughs> <laughs> no wonder. In, uh, in, order to, uh, in, in order to progress throughout the game... Uh, you have to uh, uh, you have to be able to communicate uh, uh, with the others through time, and to do this, uh, they do not. They all have. Uh, uh, they cannot transport each other through time. They need to get back to the present, all of them. But uh, in order to in order to get themselves to that point, they need to periodically and and uh, what they need to continuously change and alter history whether it's the past present or future so for example the guy in the present needs to dress himself up in the disguise of a tentacle uh, so someone in the future takes a takes a uh, a diagram sh uh, from a doctor showing the anatomy of a tentacle flushes it down a toilet that transports it through time. I'm not kidding. Uh, the guy 200 years in the past gives the uh, uh, gives the diagram of the tentacle to Betsy Ross, who sews it up as the American flag. 
and uh, therefore all uh, changing time for the person in the present who happens to be nearby a flagpole and therefore is given the opportunity to, to disguise himself as a as a, a red white and blue striped uh, tentacle it's a American tentacle <laughs> it's American tentacle exactly uh, this this game has has developed its own uh, its own sense of flaws uh, uh, but takes on all new ones in which um, at at any point in time you can actually you can actually uh, flush stuff down the toilet even when you're not near it. So it bends the it it's a guilt totally guilty pleasure of every which way that I've overlooked uh, in terms of its problems, but. It's an example of everything that happens is just so hilarious and ridiculous. You can overlook that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Although we now have a uh, we now have a future in which um, uh, we have a uh, everything's safe except we now have a flag that's shaped like a tentacle. So. <laughs> yeah. Hentai. This uh, is so so hard not trying to turn this into a perverted conversation. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so since James technically talked about a video game, I kind of want to hop into into a TV show. Oh, me too. This show is not what you guys have heard before. It's actually a short-lived. Actually, it has twelve episodes. Canceled kind of move show. And it's actually listed under movies. I don't know why it was listed under the movies instead of TV. I don't know why. But it's a show called Outlaws from 1986. And it's a Western sci-fi um, detective series. It's a three-genre show. What happens in the show is, you know, it's a Western. So you're in this Western setting and, you know, you got the good guys and the outlaws and blah, blah blah there's a standoff so mexican standoff is what you will and what happens is that it's it's uh, there's a storm of ruin yeah. mm -hmm. it's raining it's pouring and all of a sudden this lightning bolt struck all the guys and transporting them into the future a bolt of lightning. A bolt of fucking lightning sends them into the future. Never has happened. Well, technically... Like a... Wait a minute. Didn't that happen in uh, Back to the Future? Don't you need bolts of lightning to go... Yes, because that had 1.21 gigawatts of power. But it's just... The lightning book took five guys. Not in a machine, not into a... It was just them alone. It just kind of zapped them like a whirlwind of a... This happens? So that's a world of... Da, 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 da. <laughs> no. Um, the happy world. Yes. It just... It's weird because it's like, wouldn't they be dead if they got struck by lightning? It's just, what does this lightning... Is it consist of like time-traveling juice that just zaps them and like, oh, oh, there you are in the future. Maybe it's that primordial ooze stuff from Casper. Could It could be. So, they, they get transported into 1986 and they're like, oh my god, what the hell is going on? They're cowboys, so they don't know what technology. They don't know what TVs, showers, well, like lack of the term. Yeah. Oh boy, satellite phones. <laughs> <laughs> They're just like so confused about what 1986 is, and of course, all the five men who had these grudges in, in the West made a truce with each other. It's like, okay, let's start a private investigation detective agency to pay the bills, and the series just goes. On from there, being okay, we're cowboys from the West, and we're gonna stop some crime in modern 1986. 
I don't know what sounds crazier. That or the fact a movie exists where H.G. Wells creates a time machine to pursue Jack the Ripper in the 20th century. <laughs> time, oh. time after time. Yep. Oh, yeah. Time after time. That's a yeah. good I can so. imagine how many jokes they have to put in where, like, those old Westerners, they have to learn about modern technology. Hey, what is this cellular phone? <laughs> what is it? What's this Italian plumber doing with damn turtles on the TV screen? Oh my god! An ninja tried to shoot at me! Get the gun and shoot the screen! Oh. What is the TV screen to begin with? <laughs> no, I that... don't even know what an indoor flush toilet is. <laughs> they're, they're just sitting. They think they got a hotel room at, in, the, like in the pilot episode, and they're just sitting there, and this guy finds a remote, he's like, What's this? Clicks it. Oh! Whoa! What's this? Click! Oh! What's that? Just got spooked by it. That's a light bulb. Did Mr. Uh, did Mr. Edison stop by here by any chance? Everybody's got them light bulbs now. They, must um, be glad. Uh, oh, it must be it. Edison's room. It's full of light bulbs. <laughs> Let's hope they have brains, or otherwise we'll get the late. We'll probably get the most obvious joke of the bunch that no one's brought up. Check it out uh, here. There appears to be some kind of soap in the uh, sinky tub over here. Oh, oh I yes. screwed the joke. I screwed up the joke. Ah. All right, take two. Oh, looky here. It appears to be some sort of cheese block over here by this uh, giant sink bowl like thing. I think that's soap. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, what was. Wait, what was that I'm movie that you. Now. Wait, what was that movie that used the used that bar of soap like as like they thought it was mint? Oh, Madagascar. <gasps> yes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Madagascar. Oh yeah, that and Coneheads. They did that joke too. You see, Belder in the uh, bathroom just literally pick up a, a bar of soap and just eats it. I guess. I can see that happening on Saturday Night Live. Do mm. not do that in a kids' movie though. <laughs> <laughs> Don't give them ideas, please. They have them using condoms as bubble gum. How is that oh. not shit? <laughs> Dude, that is you. Uh, it's it's raid PG for some reason. I don't know why. Yeah, so that's what my TV show that I I think it's on YouTube at least. Like the pilot episode is, and a couple episodes of it it's on YouTube. You can watch. I don't, not all the episodes are up there, but I know some of you can watch Outlaws. So, we were going to go into Time After Time. Actually, I was going to do Futurama, but Time After Time was just a joke because I have yet to see the movie. Me, yeah, I heard about it. i never seen the movie either. It just it's, uh, The premise alone is fucking amazing. I mean, I it, it's Michael Mc... How do you pronounce his name? Michael McDonald, uh, the... Dowell. Thank you, Clockwork Horn. Yeah. But no, uh, me and James, uh, um, I, I showed him this. It was an episode of Futurama, the final episode, where Professor Fonsworth invents a button that takes you ten seconds back in the time. And it, it's a very complicated thing to explain exactly um, the, the logistics of the button in question, but sort of that idea of literally going back ten seconds before. And... If memory recedes me, there's this scene where Fry's walking into a diamond shop, and there's this um, Superman kind of character that's literally turning coals into diamonds. And it's revealed that they've been there before because the massive amount of diamonds in Bender's stomach. So it's sort of that deja vu kind of sense, especially repeating a event that has occurred ten seconds before. Oh yeah, now I remember the, the coda is that the button cannot immediately jump back another 10 seconds forward because it has to, like, warm up or something like that. Um, and if it's done, I think, like, a second before, uh, people or matter get shredded or something to that extent. And I don't want to give away the ending because I don't know how many people have seen this episode. I... But... All right, I, I, won't, I won't spoil how it ends. But there's just so much logistics in terms of time traveling and repeating um, events in a continuous stasis. 
Um, I'm just going to leave it at that. I wish I go into deeper detail. All right. Yeah, I remember most of what he's talking about. Mm. <laughs> uh... Zoidberg gains 10 and he loses 10. <laughs> James knows what I'm talking about. I'm smiling. <laughs> uh, anything else? Um, I, I don't think so. I don't no. think we've talked about Doctor Who yet, have we? No, we have not. Um, I did. Well, briefly. It was oh, briefly. Uh, briefly, but on that full extent. Mm-hmm. Mm. I mean, it's that whole idea of just having a machine that literally takes you to any point in time, and I'm trying to think of an episode where something catastrophic happens, but the only episode that's literally coming to mind is when they visit Charles Dickens. And I know no, one's, no one has seen this episode, but it's from the newer season. Yeah, it's, I rem- I've seen it. And it's the question of, you know, what happens if we change the past and all that kind of stuff. And I want to give it away, but there's a certain reason as to why, um, well, I've been learning a lot of Dickens recently, and as it turns out, uh, he was uh, kind of an ass in his time. (laughs) Yeah, let's just say for people that have decided to do their own adaptation of A Christmas Carol on a stage version, and not the version he approves... There are going to be lawsuits. Lawsuits Ooh. wilder than Yosemite Sam's crazy schemes. You huh. thought Thomas Edison was bad trying to fight DC over AC? This is worse. <laughs> uh, and so, yeah, he was successful with A Christmas Carol, but at the same time he lost money just because of those lawsuits and stuff. Just the finances and all that. Um, and so they really depict his character in that angle, which I'm half glad, half good. But the thing that sort of emotes, you know, the reason for why Dickens has kind of like this change of heart and the reason why is because of one certain event that they keep in Stellanius that prevents it from literally changing the fabric of history. Um, And it's sort of just interesting, again, going to these different periods and that whole risk of if one thing falls into place, everything's going to mess up. It's like that Trias of Horror episode on The Simpsons where Homer keeps going back to the Cretaceous period and destroying dinosaurs and stuff like that. Or, as we mentioned before, Ray Bradbury's A Sound of Thunder. Oh, yes. Same concept, only the mm. originator. Brilliant advice to get on your wedding day from your own father. So, what about what else do we have here? Thirteen going up thirty. Uh, just pick a few titles. Did we do Groundhog Day? Nope. Oh, actually. Yeah, that that's the time loop instead of the time warp. Yeah. Yeah, but it still has the concept of time travel in it. Well, it's funny too because in the original. Um, the original script, if memory recedes me, there was supposed to be like a reason for why Phil was repeating Groundhog Day, but um, they decided to drop it because they felt they'd be cheated without seeing uh, Phil's growing realization of the nature of the time loop. Hmm. And if memory recedes me, um, Harold Ramis states that he believes that ten years has passed, um, but I think at some point they were supposed to have like the time loop keep going on and on and on and on and on, but I can't remember exactly why they changed it in the end. Good question. Let me talk about another form of time travel, which have been featured in a 2010 movie called Hot Tub Time Machine. <laughs> yes, I avoided that one. It's... Really? It's really... It's a great homage to the 80s. Really? Oh. <laughs> I'm surprised. It's a, great Wait, om- it's a great homage to the 80s. What happens in the movie... I don't care for spoilers at all, because you got to yeah. check it out anyways. Um, um, three days. <laughs> it so, um, it's just about a group of friends 
that are dissatisfied with their lives and that they want to reminisce about, you know, this great time they had back in 86 called Winterfest 86, the weekend of which Poison played to a huge crowd at a ski resort. So they go back to their uh, uh, resort along with um, a nephew. Uh, one of the nephews goes with them too. They find this hot tub in the back of their room, and they're like, "What's this? Let's have some fun, hot tub party." And one of the guys, br- one of the one of the guys brings a illegal Russian energy drink called Chernobyl, which is a reference to that incident back in Russia. And with all the craziness of the partying and the energy drink, it kind of combines into this time machine, you know, the hot tub goes into this crazy mode and bursts them into back to 86. 87. It, it's 86. 87. It's 86. It's 87. It's 86. Well, they're both, they're both connected. It's almost the same thing. It's 1986. <laughs> okay, whatever. 1986. So they're back... <laughs> So they're back in Winter 86, and they're kind of like, what the fuck just Yep, that? yep, he's right, it's 86. Okay. <laughs> I've seen the movie, I've... God never... bless Wikipedia! I know, I'm reading the Wikipedia right now. Yeah. Um, so, the nephew's like, this is not an ordinary hot tub, it's a hot tub time... time machine. And they're trying to, like, figure out, like, what the fuck's going on? Like, how do we do this, huh? It's like, they're talking about Terminator things, like... Oh, we went back in time, so what do we do about this and that? And they're walking around, and they're like, This is 1986. Oh, boy. So Chevy Chase is the, um, the hot tub manager. He, he's, he tries to fix it in time for them to go back in time. And they he, he talks in this, like, in this riddle, so they kind of get things going as they go. But they have to relive their what they did in 1986 in some some way or sh- shape or form because when they look in the mirror they're all in their young self they're not old as they, they, they perceive themselves they're young and everybody sees them as young while the nephew is just a glitch because the nephew is just sitting there and he glitches sometimes because he's not supposed to be in the past so what happens is he they try to go do the daily stuff they were supposed to do that day in 1986 they winter fest and you know there's a there's this running gag with Crispin Glover, and when you see him at the beginning, he has no arm. He has no arm, and they're like, "Why? Well, where did he lose his arm?" And throughout that For those whole, you don't know, uh, Crispin Glover plays a guy who works at the ski resort. Yes, so... at the ski resort, he's a bellhop. He's a bellhop with one arm, and people are wondering where did he lose his arm. So throughout that whole night in 1986, the guys see him working around. Just a sec. Juggling. Uh... Juggling a chainsaw. He's the performer at the hotel. Okay, now I really have to see this movie. <laughs> and that's the running gag, is that every time every time they see him with the chainsaw, they're saying, okay, it's going to happen now. I bet it's going to happen now. I bet it's going to happen now. Uh, um, uh, the... Uh, the the film is, in my opinion, at least brilliant because uh, it met, and unlike serious science fiction, uh, uh, the ridiculousness of the scenario allows you to overlook a lot of the different uh, a lot of the different problems that this film has. Like um, it was released, it takes place technically the present is 2010. The nephew is 20 years old. And um, so, if they travel back to 1986, uh, something happens. Might uh, might not make sense with the present, but they continuously refer to all throughout the film that uh, that um, they've gone back 20 years in the past. Hmm. Mathematically incorrect. Very mathematically incorrect, and yet, just to see, uh, just to see Craig Robinson uh, singing Jesse's Girl and uh, Let's Get It Started in front of uh, 
a crowd of a crowd of music lovers in 1986, I give it a pass. It was okay mm-hmm. with the singing mm-hmm. part, but what did what did you even tell them? Uh, I sort of continued along the line of what uh, what you told them about Crispin Glover. I didn't give it away though. Oh, good, 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 good. Yes, and I know they're making a sequel, which I'm excited for. Yes. Yay! They are. Ac- according to the Internet Movie Database standards, it is also known as Hot Tub Time Machine 3 because Hot Tub Time Machine 2 hasn't happened yet. <laughs> <laughs> really? Wait for the title, then thanks, Gilling 3. Are you Wait better going title. To, are, are you going to... Uh, are they going to... Um, oh, Jones back in time and stop and stop uh, events that happened in time uh, travel two, which never happened yet. John, John, John Cusack's not going to be in this film either. He's being replaced by Adam Scott. Who? Who's that? <laughs> who, who that? Who that? Who that? Um. The what now? The what now? Uh, John Cusack's not going to be in Time Tra- a Hot Tub Time Machine 2. He's going to be replaced by Adam Scott, who you may know for, let's see, uh, he was in Hellraiser Bloodline, Star Trek First Contact. Ooh, he was good in that one. Uh, Veronica Mars, Monster in Law, Knocked Up. He was in the show called Party Down. Uh, he was in... Step Pro- oh, he was the a-hole in Step Brothers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. Oh yes. All right. Oh, so yeah, yeah, he's he's gonna be in Hot Tub Time Machine too. Bloodline. Um, what piece of crap that was. Uh, Bloodline three D was shit. Huh? Eh. Yeah, he was in that one. It's not really shitty in my opinion, but it's a different topic for a different day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, Hot Tub Time Machine, in my opinion, is a great comedy and a little homage to the '80s because actually. They make an homage nod to uh, Better Off Dead, of which John Cusack was in, of which uh, they, they quoted saying, I won the bet and I want my $2, if you have seen the movie. I haven't seen... I, I, I haven't seen either, so, but it's great, it's just, if you haven't yeah. seen it, if you haven't seen it, um, probably check it out. Yeah, be interested in. Oh. See, they've got returning cast members: Craig Robinson, Rob Corger, Chevy Chase. What? Oh, uh, like to? Fucking. I would like to know how. How exactly they're going to explain this? I know. I would like to know. Um, so they do. They do everything. Almost right, you know, with a few hit hit or misses. Like they. <coughs> one person decides to stay in the past and so when they come back to the future the he gets they get a message from him like hey i'm back and he changes the future so much he he is the lead singer of motley crew and he calls it motley lou because his, his name the movie away here? yes because yes. the ending is just so Okay. The ending is kind of funny because he changes everything and it's all because of his name, Lou, Lou, Lou. It's a funny film. Any last films before we wrap it up? Um, none really that pop pops up in my mind for now. I think like we pretty much covered everything. <laughs> I think we definitely covered the pros and cons of time travel films, how... They can stick really close to the continuity of the plot and make it a huge, huge, serious risk. But then you have films that just say, screw logic, we're just going to do our own thing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Indeed. And usually that bit works better in terms of comedy. Yeah. Except Free Birds. <laughs> oh, yes. I'm sorry, even if I haven't seen it, I'm still standing by it. <laughs> Whoever cooked up this idea, for the love of God, I will see to it you get a veggie burger for Thanksgiving. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, 
I could say something right now, but I, again, I don't want to spoil the movie. <laughs> about a tofu burger? Oh, uh, I think. No, no, no. I know you guys know what I'm talking mm-hmm. about. The TV spot burger. spoiled it for me, so I, I can't say it. So, but I will say though, there was a TV spot that did spoil it for me, so I think I know what you're talking about, Matt. Uh, okay, there you go. Uh, so with that, this has been Cinema Royale. I'm officially out of gum, so I can't talk about more films. And, of course, this episode's coming out the same weekend as the new film, About Time, which features a romantic comedy science fiction film. <laughs> of which a guy travels through time, change, try to change his past to have a better future. Oh, yeah, that one. Hmm. Yeah, that looks stupid. Yeah, uh, starring, Ra- starring Rachel McAdams, who starred in The tra- Time Traveler's Wife. So, two time travel oh. movies! Good for you, Rachel. Not. Yay. Oh, wait. Yay. I mixed up Rachel McAdams with Jennifer Connelly, didn't I? Oh. I feel like an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I didn't catch it when you said it. But yeah, it was Rachel McAdams, not Connelly. Um, I was going to correct you on that. I didn't I didn't think anyone else picked up on that as well. I... I I didn't. He- I didn't think about it until now. I was like, "Shit, uh. that, that wasn't Connolly. It was McAdams." Oh. <laughs> okay. Um. So here's a little. T- here's a little uh, different thing about this episode is that I am not in my normal room. The dartboard is not with me. I can't sh- just point a dart at something and give you the topic. Oh. So I t- actually have the dartboard on my phone. I took a picture of it before I left home. Why would you have a dartboard on your phone? I don't have a dart. So you could throw a dart on it and get a new phone. <laughs> Dink! I broke my phone. Crap, I gotta get a new one. <laughs> it's like those new phone commercials where they're just deliberately destroying them for an upgrade. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Why would you do that? Because uh, they want to upgrade. Because their plan doesn't let them. Like rats, the screen fizzled up before I even saw what it landed on. <laughs> That's funny. So, I've got, let's see, I took one topic off, so there's 19 plus 4, 20, 22, 23, 24, 24? So, you, I have 4 in the bullseye, and then you guys can pick a number between 1 through 20. Or bullseye, if you want a bullseye topic. Alright. I don't care. Anybody can just give me a number. Just one person. Give me a number. Three, seven. Five. Three, seven, five. Okay. Three. I find it weird those are odd numbers we picked. <laughs> yeah, they are. They are. They're, on, they're all odd numbers, not even even. All, all of them are spaced two apart. And that is weird. Yeah. Oh my goodness, we we are on the same wavelength, everybody. <laughs> oh yeah, God. just see the power of two. Mm. Three, seven, five. Five is the Die Hard franchise. Uh, seven is video game movies, and three. What the fuck is three? <sighs> I lost three. What the fuck is? One, two. This is kind of sad. Uh, where the fuck did it go? Did I cover number three? What the fuck? One. That's 13. Where the fuck is... I absorbed number three. <laughs> <laughs> you made it disappear off the dart- dartboard. That's what I say. You just made it... Okay. Dis- oh, James, do you have a black hole with you at the moment? <laughs> Yes, That's only it's touched extra. my ass. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, I gotta let's see. So, video game movies, Die Hard French. Where the hell is three? The dartboard is weird. And three it's, was a magic number too. <laughs> it's usually the magic number, and it's gone. It just unless some blind as a fucking bat. That's what the that's what Mickey, Donald, and Goofy taught me. Oh, shut up! Oh. 
<laughs> El Garch. Uh, oh, I got it. I got it. Three. What? All right. So, Die Hard franchise, video game movies, or films considered the worst. Did we already do films considered nope. the worst? Yeah. Consider the best is what we did. Mm. Oh, films considered the worst. Oh, well. <laughs> sort of done that. Yeah. I would go with video game movies. I, we haven't done that yet, have we? No, we haven't. Yeah. All these topics on the board have never been done, in my opinion. You guys can decipher your own things. But yeah, video game movies sound a very wise interesting venture. Because <laughs> they never get it right. Well, except Mortal Kombat. A bit. A bit. Yeah, yeah. But bit. that's for. That's for the next time. With that, we're done. <laughs> All right. All right, then. Thanks for listening. <laughs> Ciao for now. See you later, dudes. Bananas are plentiful. Yes, they are. That's all I got!